Greetings and welcome to the Neurotheology YouTube channel's Reasons to Read series. In this episode, I will be talking about Rewiring Your Preaching by Richard Cox. Now, Richard Cox, he has a doctorate in philosophy, medicine, and theology. So um, I recommend this book partly because um, Dr. Cox is an enormously brilliant person, um, but um, he has so much to offer in this book about how we how we offer sermons, uh, but also how we receive them. And whether or not you're Christian, this is a Christian book, whether or not you're Christian, um, if you give speeches, um, if you just talk to people, <laughs> this book has a lot to offer. So I'll, I'll talk about it in, in some degree in a Christian sense, but also just in more of a, a general sense that uh, Dr. Cox, he, he says that our brains are geared toward picking up information that is imminent for our survival as well as healing. So in a sermon, when we're preaching, if you're someone that preaches, if you can hone in on things that help people with their healing, but also for imminent survival. But if you're giving a speech, or if you're just talking with someone that, if you're trying to offer information that's helpful, pe people are gonna pick up more on, on what we offer if we're able to really tie it down to things that, that help us with our healing, but also with our imminent survival, because the brain is wired toward finding that information uh, we all want to heal. We all want to have uh, things that help us survive. So that's one reason to read it. Um, another, he talks about engramming, and and engramming for him is basically when we embody when we embody what we preach or what we say. You know, people are going to believe us more. Uh, there was a major study by Ipsos recently that found that non Christians uh, find Christians quite hypocritical, uh, judgmental. Uh, Jesus said that. Christians would be known by their fruit, like a, of love or joy or peace. So if we're preaching and people don't see us living a life outside of our sermons being full of love or kindness, uh, then it's going to be way harder for people to believe or, or even take the time to listen to or even go to church if, if a person that's preaching doesn't embody those, those, those feelings or, um, of love or joy or peace. So he, he calls it ingramming. So he talks... Uh, a bit about that. He uh, he has so many resources in this book, but uh, in in terms of, of really engaging our sermons, that if we use multiple parts of our brain in a sermon, engage people. Uh, I used to not necessarily believe in prompts or uh, or props in sermons, uh, but he talks a lot about how our brains we remember better when we engage people in memories about our auditory, uh, auditory, but also our uh, olfactory, uh, as well as, as sight. So if you have a prop, like I have this book right now, if you have a prop, a lot of our, our, our sense perception is geared toward visual. So in a, in a sermon, if you have a prop, people will remember it better. So if you have a prop, that prop will be remembered. But if you engage people um, in scripture, we, it talks about being salt of the earth, I remember one pastor, she, she handed out salt for everyone in the congregation to taste during her sermon. And people remembered that because it activated that other part of a brain. And often when we're teaching, we just use our words. It's very auditory. But if we're able to use other parts of our brain, people are able to remember better. So those are several things that I would hope could help um, not only with people that are preaching out there with better sermons, um, and if you're listening, you're Christian, you could maybe encourage your pastor uh, or your priest to use some of these resources. Uh, but it's also something I think all of us could use. That, uh, if you're giving a speech, if you're in conversation with friends, you want them to remember something, tie it to multi-sensory information. Tie it to the olfactory senses. Tie it to memories, uh, more visual. And people are going to remember that better. So highly recommend this book. Uh, it is Christian. Uh, I do have a website. It's Christian Neuroscience. It has all sorts of other resources on neuroscience and Christianity. But I also have a website. It's Spiritual Neuroscience that has all sorts of resources that are interfaith, uh, more uh, secular, academic. So thank you for being here. Uh, many reasons to recommend this book. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.